Et midere digneri sanctum angelum tuum de celis, qui custodiat fobiat protegat, visitet atque defendat omnes habitantes in hoc habitaculo, per Christum Dominum nostrum.
Amen. Patrice, c'est fini. Et à l'esprit de tout, Amen. Intro, il va dans ta rédé. Je dis qu'à mes dégâts, ça dit, je n'ai qu'un samyam de gentil dans le sang, ta abomine, et n'est qu'au être de nos jours, et rouillé. Que ce soit, je fais toujours ma croix, mais je veux dire, c'est quand je suis de vous, je veux dire, mais je me casse. Grazie. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>
Ces populites, oui, que je mouche dans une clémente exaudi, ou de qui juste et propagatis dans ses affiches d'amour, protou in aminis gloria misericordia libere mour, per dominum nostrum Jesum Christum et filium tuum, qui te convivit et trignat in unitate spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula secula rum. Lexio Epistole Beati Pauli Apostoli Ad Corinthios Fratres, Nechitis Quodi Quint Stadio Currunt Omnes Quides Currunt Set Unus Sancipit Bravium Sic Currite Ut Comprehendatis Omnis Atem Qui In Agone Contendit Ab omnibus e abstinet, et illiquidem ut corruptibidem coronam accipiant, nos atem incorruptam. Ego igitur sic curo, non quasi in incertum, sic pugno, non quasi e aere, E rem verberans, set castigo corpus meum et in servitutem redigo, ne forte cum aliis predicaverim, ipse reprobus e fichiar. Nolo enim vos ignorare fratres, quaniam patres nostri omnes sum nube fuerunt, et omnes mare transierunt, et omnes in moise baptizatis sunt, in nube et in mari. Et omnes eam dem escam spiritale mandu caverunt, et omnes eum dem potum spiritale me biberunt, bebe portatem de spirituali consequente eos Petra, Petra temerat Christus, set non in pluribus eorum bene pascitum est Deo. Ah, du tout, Dieu, une opportunité de vous une tribulation de l'espérance
Sequencia Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateum In el ho tempo che Dixit Jesu Discipulis Parabolam Hank Simile est renum scelorum omini patri familias Qui exit primo mane conducere operarios in vineam suam Convencioniat em facta cum operariis Ex diuno denario diuno Misiteos in vineam suam Et egressus circa oram tertiam, vid italios astantes in foro otiosos, et dixit illis. Ite et vos in veniam meam, et quod justum fuerit dabo vobis. Iliatem abi erunt. Ite rumatem exiite circa sextam et nonam oram, et fecit si militem. Sheka undesiam mame vero exiit, et in venios alios estantes et dicit illis, quid hic estatis tota die otiosi. Dicuntei qui animo nos conduxit, dicit illis, ite et vos in veniam me amen. Cum ergo, Cum sero atem factum esset, dicit Dominus vinee procuratori suo. Voca operarios et rede illis mercedem incipienza novissimis usque ad primos. Cum vedis sentergo qui sceca undecima moram venerant, acce perunt singulos denarios. Venientes atem et primi, arbitratis sunt quod plus essent accepturi. Acce perunt atem et ipsis singulos denarios. Et accipientes murmurabant adversus patrem et familias discentes. Qui nobissimi una ora fecerunt et pares illos nobis fecisti, qui portabimus pandus diei et testus. Attile respondens uni eorum dixit, amice non facio tibi ignoriam, non ne ex denario convenisti mecum. Con tolle quod tuum est et vade, volo atem et huic novissimo dare sicut et tibi. Aut, aut non dicet mici quod volo facere, an oculus tuus nequam quaniam quia ego bonus sum. Sicerunt novissimi primi et primi novissimi. 
Muti erunt enim sun vocati, pasivero electi. Das ist so. from the epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians, for step to Sunday. Brethren, know you not that they that run in the race, all run indeed, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. And everyone that striveth for the mastery refraineth himself from all things. And they indeed that they may receive a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible one. I therefore so run not as at an, an uncertainty. I so fight not as one beating the air, but I chastise my body and bring it into subjection, lest perhaps when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. For I would not have you ignorant brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all in Moses were baptized in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual food, and drank the same spiritual drink, and they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. But with most of them God was not well pleased. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time Jesus spoke to his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like to a householder who went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And having agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing in the marketplace idle. And he said to them, Go you also into my vineyard, and I will give you that sh what shall be just. And they went their way. And again he went about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, and did in like manner. But about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing, and he said to them, Why stand you here all the day idle? They said to him, Because no man has hired us. He said to them, Go you also into my vineyard. And when evening was come, the lord of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and pay them their hire, beginning from the last even to the first. When therefore they were come, that came about the eleventh hour, they received each man a denarius. And when the first also came, they thought that they should receive more, and they also received every man a denarius. And receiving it, they murmured against the master of the house, saying, These have worked but one hour, and thou hast made them equal to us that have borne the burden of the day and the heat. But he answering said to one of them, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst, not, didst thou not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is thine and go thy way. I will also give to this last even as to thee. Or is it not lawful for me to do as I will? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So shall the last be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. of the week. First, Mrs. Nora uh, Rumble passed away on Thursday. Please pray for the repose of her soul. She will be buried tomorrow at 11.25 a.m. Um, any friend of the family who would like to pay her, their respect to her and join in uh, the rosary can come to her house from 1 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. and there will be the rosary here at 5.30 p.m. with benediction uh, after benediction. Um, and the family member will lead the rosary every hour on the hour over an open casket. So tomorrow there is 
one mass at 7 a.m. and the funeral low mass at 11.25 tomorrow. On Tuesday, Feast of the Purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary, at 6 a.m. there will be a first mass, then the blessing of candles followed by mass will be at 6.45, 6.45, not 7, but 6.45, so please don't be late, the mass might start before 7. So, blessing of candles at 6.45. 11.05 a.m. boys school song mass, well 11 a.m. blessing plus a uh, second blessing plus a uh, boys school song mass. And then a, a little, with a little procession in the church. On Wednesday, uh, federal day, three masses, 6, 7, 11, 25, low masses. On Thursday, three masses, 6, 7 a.m. all day adoration and 5.30 p.m. rosary and benediction. I recommend that adoration to your devotion. It is the first Thursday of the month, traditionally used to pray for priests and vocations. On the Friday, first Saturday, Feast of St. Agatha, Mar Virgin Martha, three Masses, 7 a.m., 11.25 girls to school song Mass, and 6 p.m. low Mass and exposition. Next Saturday, um, Feast of St. Titus, and first Saturday, 7.40 reposition and 8 a.m. song mass. It will be the regular Legion of Mary meeting at 11 a.m. this morning. Inquiry class tomorrow, Monday at 7 p.m. Catechism for adults on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Children of Mary on Thursday at 7 p.m. in the girls' school. Also, um, There was a car parking uh, fender bender, um, and so Father Johnson recommended that at the bottom parking, which is smaller than the top parking, uh, those who have big cars uh, don't park in the small parking in order to make sure there is enough room to maneuver and to avoid this kind of little fender bending, which is always very annoying. There will be a landscaping meeting. Uh, the, the, a presentation by the students of St. Dominic's College and St. Augustine's College, and guided by Mr. Ryan Peralta, on Saturday the 6th at 10.30 a.m. Anyone interested in landscaping our grounds? You are all invited, but there's no obligation. And the gala is on the 20th of February, as you know. Um, the, uh, the, please do read uh, announcements in the bulletin concerning the gala. We need your help for the spinning jenny. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The epistle and the gospel have the same message. Uh, many are called, but few are chosen. So we should not follow the world, because the world Many take the road that leads to perdition, but few find the door that leads to eternal salvation. So we must not follow the world. Unfortunately, there is recently a motu proprio of the Pope called Spiritus Domini that changes the canon law in order to permit women, widows, and older, older girls, older servers. And that is very bad. It is. It goes against the faith, it promotes heresy in the church. And unfortunately, this is the way that has been going on for the past 50 years. And it's just one more step in that path to heresy. Since the 1960s, many of the modern reforms were introduced in the same way. That is, first in practice, in disobedience to the existing laws of the church. And later this disobedience was accepted, de facto, and not punished, and then positively allowed, and now codified in the law. You see? So it starts, you know, uh, in disobedience, and then it becomes approved by the law. Such process has happened for the vernacular in the liturgy, and to the, such a point that those who defended the traditional mass used to call it simply the Latin mass, because that was the vernacular, that was the first point that was attacked. And then and there came the, um, the guitars and the modern music in the churches. That was first against the laws, but the laws were laid down by St. Pius X for church music. And then it became, uh, became the practice everywhere. And then came communion in the hand, which is much more important, much more grievous, 
and a lot of faithful resisted against that. They, 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 already from the beginning, they saw that was wrong. And, uh, and then came the new mass, first some experiments here and there, and then it became codified and imposed everywhere. And the same now applies for women readers and women author, author girls. First it was practiced in disobedience to the law, and then it was not punished, and then it was uh, uh, permitted, and then now it is positively in the canon law. It is important to notice this method, because that method makes it very clear that these novelties are not good, they all started in disobedience. Those who are disobedient are those who promote these novelties, not those who are faithful to what the Church has always done. And uh, first disobedience, then weakness and capitulation of those who have the authority, bishops and modernist popes, one after the other. I still remember a Capuchin priest in Australia who came in, uh, to our priory in 1997. He had consistently refused such older girls, in spite of his superior's insistence and he answered his superiors, the Pope did not allow it. And then in 1997, Pope John Paul II caved in and permitted it. And so he said, I have been stabbed in the back, betrayed, betrayed by those in authority. And that is what has happened repeatedly in the past 50 years, betrayed by those in authority. And that priest, thanks be to God, has now completely returned to the Church of Mass. Now it is important to notice the same method that is a revolutionary practice. And that method has been practiced also in the world. For divorce, first it was against the law, then, and then it was no longer punished, and then now it is permitted by the law. And then abortion, abortion used to be completely against the law, it was severe penalties, and now it is positively permitted by the law. And then homosexual unions, and then transgenderism today. It first the practice is against the law, and then not to punish such crimes, and then to give freedom to such crimes, and then positively to approve them in the law, and then to persecute those who oppose and denounce these crimes. And that is coming up pretty fast, that last stage, which is to persecute those who oppose these novelties and crimes. So, and the matter is at, at hand is in a recent document, the Spiritus Domini Motu Proprio on the 19th of January. What is at, at, at stake is the dogma of faith that the priesthood is reserved to men. That is a dogma of faith that the Church has always believed. It belongs to the Catholic faith and cannot change at, at all. But the modernists, by the practice, want to undermine it. The Council of Trent has a whole session on the Sacrament of Holy Orders. It is remarkable that the Council of Trent does not define that the Sacrament of Holy Orders is reserved for men, because everybody accepted that at the time. Not even the heretics denied it. The, 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 the Protestants at the time did not dare to have uh, women priests. And only afterwards they had women ministers. Now it's all, the practice is everywhere, even the Anglicans, they have women bishops, quote unquote, um, which of course is absolutely invalid and it's a mockery. But uh, this is where the modernists are going, you see. So the, uh, the Council of Trent says, chapter 1, on the institution of the priesthood of the new law. Sacrifice and priesthood are by the ordinance of God in such wise conjoined, joined together, as that both have existed in every law. The law of nature before, Abraham, before Moses, the law of the Old Testament after Moses, and the new law after Christ. So, both have existed in every law. Whereas, therefore, in the New Testament, the Catholic Church has received from the institution of Christ the holy visible sacrifice of the Eucharist. It must needs also be confessed that there is in that Church a new visible and external priesthood into which the old has been translated. So, as there is a new sacrifice in the New Testament, the sacrifice of Christ, the Holy Eucharist, that replaces all the sacrifices of the Old Testament, so there is a new priesthood in the New Testament that replaces the old priesthood of the Old Testament. St. Paul is explicit, and the, the Church teaches that here very clearly. The sacred scriptures 
scriptures show and tradition of the Catholic Church has always taught that this priesthood was instituted by the same Lord and Savior and that the apostles and their successors in the priesthood and, and to the apostles and their successors in the priesthood was the power delivered of consecrating, offering and administering his body and blood and also of forgiving and retaining sins. That's chapter 1. And the chapter 2 of uh, the Council of Trent uh, on uh, ses session 23 uh, is on the seven orders and where we ask the ministry of the Holy Spirit of so holy a priesthood is a divine thing to the end that it might be exercised in a more worthy manner and with greater veneration it was suitable that in the most well-ordered settlement of the church there should be several and diverse orders of ministers to ministers the, to the priesthood by virtue of their office orders are so distributed as that those already marked with a clerical tonsure should ascend through the lesser to the greater orders. For the, sacrament, for the sacred scripture make open mention not only of priests but also of deacons that, that is, and teach in words the most weighty that what things are specially to be attended in the ordination thereof. And from the very beginning of the church, the name of the following orders and the ministration proper to each one of them are known to have been in use. And these are the subdeacon, the acolyte, the exorcist, the lector, and the doorkeeper, the, and the porter. So, here in the chapter, the Council of Trent says, from the very beginning of the church. Though these were not of equal rank, for the subdeaconate is classed among the major orders by the fathers and the sacred councils, where we ask, we, very often a read of the other inferior orders called minor orders. And then you have the canons. Now the canons are the definition. It's ex cathedra, it's dangma defide definita, that is absolute. If anyone says that there is not in the New Testament a visible and external priesthood, or that there is not any power of consecrating and offering the true body and blood of the Lord, and of forgiving and retaining sins, but only an office and their ministry of preaching the gospel, or that those who do not preach are not, are not priests at all, let him be anathema. So that is the existence of the sacrament of priesthood that uh, has the power to consecrate the body and blood of Christ and of forgiving and, re and retaining sins. And it's not just a ministry, a, a, a preaching of gospel that could be you, like a job that you, you hire for the job and you finish the job that, that's finished, you are no longer, uh, you're no longer minister. That, that the priesthood is a permanent, uh, it gives a character, it will say that later on, and um, it is a special sacrament in the New Testament. Canon 2, if anyone says that beside the priesthood there are not in the Catholic Church other orders, both greater and minor, that is major orders and minor orders, by which, as by certain steps, advance is made unto the priesthood, let him be anathema. So it is a dogma defide definita, the most solemn one, that there are not only major but also minor orders in the Church that cannot change. It's a dogma defined by the church. Um, and what's, uh, and it, uh, it is the practice from the church from the very beginning. It will say later on, from the very apostles, you see. So it's not something light. It's something that is at the heart of our faith. If anyone said that in order, that order or sacred ordination is not truly and properly a sacrament instituted by Christ the Lord, and that it is a kind of human figment devised by men unskilled in ecclesiastical matters. This was the canonies of the Protestants. And that it is only a kind of right of choosing ministers of the word of God and of the sacrament, let him be anathema. So it is clearly a sacrament instituted by our Lord Jesus Christ himself and not just choosing ministers. If anyone says that in the Catholic Church there is not a hierarchy by divine institution consisting of bishop, priests and ministers, let him be anathema. So this is the faith of the church, you know, very important. And it's quite clear that the minor orders are part of the sacrament of order. 
and there is a whole chapter afterwards, chapter 17, in order to practically, practical consequences, in order to restore, you know, uh, in what manner the exercise of the man orders is to be restored. And the Council of Trent says that the function of holy orders from the deacon to the janita, that is from the first to the uh, deacons, which function have been laudably received in the church from the time of the apostles and which have been for some time interrupted in very many places, neglected, may be again brought into use in accordance with the sacred canons, and that they may not be traduced by the heretics as useless, the Holy Synod burning with the desire of restoring the pristine usage, that takes the following consequence, decision, and the Holy stuff it afterwards. So, it's quite clear, it is from the beginning of the Church, from the time of the Apostles themselves, and the Council of Trent wanted to restore its proper usage. It is practically used in the seminaries, where you have these uh, minor orders. Um, it used to be in the early church given even to little children. Children, when they learn to read, would be ordained, you know, first, uh, uh, porter, porter would be mostly sacristan. They would help in the sacristy, you know, like some of our boys could. And, um, and then lectors readers, then exorcist and acolyte. Exorcist now is reserved because it's very powerful things reserved uh, by the church for um, the usage is, is reserved either within the sacrament, the sacrament of baptism has several exorcism, or the blessing, some blessings like the blessing of uh, St. Benedict's Medal, but otherwise you need special permission of the bishop to use that, that order. But the sacrament of acolyte, the, the order of acolyte, is uh, used to be given to young children in the early church who were able to serve properly, but um, who were too young to take a, a life uh, to understand the vow of chastity. And the vow of chastity was done at the subdeaconate. So, because then they would wait for the subdeaconate, and then it was a choice whether they continue towards the priesthood, being subdeacon, deacon and priest, or whether they, uh, they get married. They could later on, with either because of the death of the wife or because the wife would enter the, uh, the convent, they could later on become priests if they wanted. But there was always the requirement of chastity from the subdeaconate. So, in 1972, Pope Paul VI, contrary to this sacred tradition, suppressed the subdeaconate and the minor orders. That is unbelievable. That which the Church declares as defide, the existence of the minor orders is defide, Pope Paul VI just suppress it. This is wrong, deeply wrong. That hurts the church because it hurts the priesthood and we're going to see how important it is. And he replaced it by ministries of readers and acolytes. But because this replaced the minor orders and minor orders were reserved, reserved for men, these ministries were still reserved to men. I remember back in 1983 visiting New Zealand. At that time, the bishops of New Zealand, led by Colonel Williams of, um, of uh, Wellington, uh, protested against the uh, right of ordination to these ministries because they were reserved for men. And at least they were reserved for men, but there was some protest, and the Colonel was not sanctioned for his protest, um, as happened. So first of all, he suppressed the minor orders, replaced them by ministries. They used to be reserved for men, but practically the, the practice came and disregarded uh, this uh, reservation, and there were uh, some, uh, some women uh, readers, or women, um, uh, or the girls, and so on. But they could not receive the, order, the, 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 the right of institution of this ministry, you see. And um, now the Pope is changing the canon law in order to allow them to receive this, uh, say, establish some kind of a right to, uh, to allow them to, to do these things. And that is deeply wrong. It attacks the very priesthood you know, by trying to give secondary things to people who cannot become priests, you know, and uh, things which normally are reserved to those who are preparing themselves for the priesthood, you see. The older boys are permitted to do certain things which normally belong to acolytes, because there are many of them, some of them hopefully, are preparing themselves to the priesthood. And that's good. And instead of um, you know, fostering vocations by you know, fostering good older boys, they open that door to girls and they completely break the whole thing. Why is it so important? It's very simple. If the Mass is only a meal 
then women can prepare it. But because it is a sacrifice, only a man can do it. So you have the very sacrifice of the Masih which is at stake. Our Lord's sacrifice is a true sacrifice on the cross and our Lord is the groom of the church on the cross. And that is very clear in St. Paul and also the, the, the Adam and Eve. Eve was born of the um, open side of Adam in his sleep. You know, and uh, th- our Lord in his, the sleep of death, his side was open and there came forth water and blood, which is the image of the church. And Our Lady was at the foot of the cr- uh, church, uh, at the foot of the cross, because Eve was made uh, right away as an adult, and she was uh, joined to uh, Adam, you know, in the second matrimony, right there. And Our Lady symbolizes the church at the foot of the cross, united with Christ dying on the cross. And St. Paul says to the Ephesians, Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so also let the wife be to their husband in all things. And husband, love your wife as Christ also loved the church, and delivered himself up for it. So that is the pattern that is given to husband and wife, is the union of Christ and the church on the cross. It is the sacrifice of our Lord. And families need that pattern of the sacrifice. If the sacrifice is accepted in the family, then the family will be strong. But if there is no sacrifices, it won't stand. It won't stand. So there is need of sacrifices in the family, and the model given to Catholic families is the union of Christ and the Church on the cross. So our Lord is the groom on the church, on the cross, and therefore only a man can take his place. You see, that's very. He is the priest, and he is a groom, and because the mass is a sacrifice, so to attack. The, uh, the fact that only men can, become, can be priests is to attack the priesthood itself, it is to attack the sacrifice. And to attack the Mass as a sacrifice is to attack the very mystery of the redemption. It hurts the Church at its very core, at its very heart. That is very grievous. In order to pass that novelty, they pretend that the, these activities only belong to the uh, common ministry, uh, c- common priesthood of the faithful. This is the novelty of Vatican II, and that is not true. You know. the, there are three sacraments that give a character, baptism, confirmation, and holy orders. At each level, there is a certain participation in the priesthood of Christ, but in very different, very different. At the first level, by baptism, you know, we are called to what St. Paul says, Offer your bodies as living and holy victims, pleasing to God, reasonable worship. That is the common priesthood of the faithful, to make sacrifices of their own selves, to mortify their bodies. That's not to serve at the altar. It's quite different, very different. The second degree, the confirmation, prepares for martyrdom, the sacrifice of their own life. And the third degree, the sacrifice of Christ which is higher than our sacrifice, and that is the Mass. So everything that is to do with the serving of the altar belongs to the priesthood, to the sacrificial priesthood, and not to the common sacrifice, priesthood of the faithful. You see? So it is a, a, a false reasoning, very false reasoning. Everything that belongs to the sacrifice of the altar is the sacrifice of Christ, and that belongs to the to the, to, the, uh, to the priesthood, the sacrament of priesthood, either as a preparation to the priesthood or the priesthood itself. And therefore it should be reserved to men. Because our Lord is the groom of the church on the cross. So, my dear brethren, we need to keep the faith. And we need to be aware of the dangers to the faith. They turn around, they try to escape you know, the uh, uh, formal heresy, but they come so close that so many people fall. You see, and that is not good. They are, and especially when those who should lead the church in the right direction lead it in the wrong direction, everything is, is in a mess in the church today because of that. So um, we must keep the faith of all times, the fact that the priesthood is reserved to men and the preparation to the priesthood should be reserved to men and uh, pray that there will be many good and holy vocations among our older boys, that's very important. But um, we must give the faith that this is not for girls. For the sacrifice, uh, 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 the model for the girls is Our Lady at the foot of the cross, which is a beautiful model, but it's different from Our Lord on the cross. You see? So the model for the boys is Our Lord on the cross himself. 
You see, that's more sacrifice. And that's the reason of the celibacy of the priest, the sacrifice. That the priest should be chaste because they should stand for Christ, sacrificed, victim. You see, that goes together. You see, you take away the sacrifice and you take away the chastity of the priesthood. And everything falls apart. So we need to keep the dogma of the church, we need to keep the practice of the church and not compromise with these novelties which undermine the faith and are becoming worse and worse. Let us pray for the church that the Guru may have pity, mercy on his church and restore the sanctity that it should, uh, should shine in the church and not be destroyed by this modernist. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Perfecto. 
Fratelli e Fratelli. Dominus Vahabis cum Sursum Kadam Gracias a Gamus Domino de un rostro. Vere digno metius tu meste cometa salutare. Nos te bis sempre tu bique gracia sagere. Domine sancte pater omnipotens eterne Deus. Qui comunisce ni tuo figlio tuo et spiritu sancto unus es Deus. Unus es Domine. Minus, non in unio singularitate persone, sed in unio trinitate substantiae. Quod enim de tua gloria revelante te credimus, hoc de filio tuo, hoc de spiritu santo, sine differentia discretionis sentimus. Ut in confessione vere sempre ne quede itatis, et in personis proprietas, et in essenia unitas, et in maestate adore ture qualitas. Quam an haudant angeli atque arcangeli, cherubim quoque arc serafim, qui in honces santa mare quotidi, una voce di centes. Santo, 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 non te lo stava a te. Prendi su un cielo di terra, gloria tua, o stanna in ascenso. E vedi tu se vedi di tabine, dammi, o stanna in ascenso.
Please go quick, pick up the balls. Omnia secula secula hocum. Oremus precepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater noster, qui es in celis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis rodie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus et debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentacionem. Omnia secula secula orum. Pax Domini sit sempre vobiscum. Agnus Dei, cui te l'ispegata non di misere. Agnus Dei, cui te l'ispegata non di misere. Agnus Dei, cui te l'ispegata non di donna la vis pascia.
Sounds Misericordia <coughs> Domine non sum digno, sud in tres sub tectum meum, set antum dig verbo tan abitur anima mea. Domine non sum digno, sud in tres sub tectum meum, set antum dig verbo tan abitur anima mea. Corpus de Mestri, Jesu Christi, Gantu Lui, Tante Ramam, Amen. Corpus de Mestri, Jesu Christi, Gantu Lui, Tante Ramam, Amen. Corpus de Mestri, Jesu Christi, Gantu Lui, Tante Ramam, Amen. Corpus de Mestri, Jesu Christi, Gantu Lui, Tante Ramam, Amen. 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 Amen.
Capuchinha é assim, eu quero ser muito bem também. Capuchinha é assim, eu quero ser muito bem também. Capuchinha é assim, eu quero ser muito bem também. Capuchinha é assim, eu quero ser muito bem também. Capuchinha é assim, eu quero ser muito bem também. Capuchinha é assim, eu quero ser muito bem também. Capuchinha é assim, eu quero ser muito bem também. Capuchinha é assim, eu quero ser muito bem também. Capuchinha é assim, eu quero ser muito bem também. Capuchinha é assim, eu quero ser muito bem também.
Dominus vahabis cum. Oremus, fideles tui Deus per tua dona firmentur, ut ea de men percipiendo requirant, et querendo sine fine percipiant. Per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum et Filium Tuum, qui te cum vivite trignat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Dominus Vahabis Cum. Benedicat vos omnipotens in Deus. Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus, Dominus Vobiscum, Initium Sancti Evangelii Secundum Ioannem, In principio erat verbum et verbum erat apud Deum et Deus erat verbum, hoc erat in principio apud Deum, omnia per ipsum e facta sunt et sin ipso factum est nicere e quod e factum est. In ipso vita erat et vita erat lux ominum et lux in tenebris lucet et 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 tenebri eam non comprehende cunt. Fuitum omissus a Deo qui in amen erat Ioannes. Hic venit in testimonium ut testimonium per eberet de lumine ut omnes caterent per in vum. Non erat ille lux et ut testimonium per eberet de lumine. Erat Erat lux vera quae illuminat omnem hominem venientem in hoc mundum. In nundu erat in nunus per ipsum factus es et nunus eum non cognovit. In propria venit et sui eum non receperunt. Quod quotatem receperunt eum deliteis potestatem e filios de fieri. His qui credunt in nomine eios, qui non ex sanguinibus, neque ex averunt ad vicanis, neque ex averunt ad viveris ex deu natis sunt. Et verbum caro factum est, et abit abit in nobis, et vidimus o gloriam eius, o gloriam quasi uni genitia, Patre, plenum gracie et veritate. Alma, et emetor, 